G'day, hi, and welcome. All right, uh, whew, that is cold in here. Just letting uh, Yuna go, my beloved CRV, warm up a little bit. I'm gonna put my violin down on the ground. I forgot to take pictures of myself tonight. Well, I'll get somebody else to take pictures of me tonight. Uh, let me tell you about that Hornsteiner violin in a moment. But first, I'm going to need to have warmth, warmth and love in here somehow. I've got to let that, uh, so put that on really low, do that, do that, <laughs> I can see my breath, I'm not going to be able to see where I'm going, all right, so there, okay, so, and lights out, so, okay, so, I'm just leaving Cafe 1870, I have no idea what time it is, probably later than I thought, what a great night, guys, um, I got, like, let me first off tell you what's going on here tonight. Tonight, the bar was kind of empty at first because tonight is the uh, October 17th. It's like, I guess the transmission's cold. I don't want to run anybody over here. But anyway, um, Tonight is October 17th, so if you don't know what today is, today is the day, strangely enough, that marijuana got legalized in Canada. So, needless to say, the bar was kind of empty tonight uh, to begin with. It was like the first time, even Greg was like, this is that never happens. Like, we had this guy from Hamilton, uh, Gilles Giuseppe, if I say his name, Gi Giuseppe, Giuseppe, whatever his name is. Uh, real nice guy, I was just talking to him. A little bit, team came up and jammed with me a little bit. That was pretty cool. But, uh, kind of a bit of an inspirational thing, you know. Uh, but uh, long story short, um, it was one of those things that. Uh, the construction, so I gotta get by the construction. Um, the. Uh, yeah, so it's like, hey, this guy comes all the way up from Hamilton, there's like nobody out. It's like, I'm like, I got here, I said, okay, no, it snowed today a little bit, it's a little cool, but that's not enough to keep everybody out at home. And there's a guy, oh, I know what's happening, all the potheads are stoned, sitting at the stop signs waiting for them to turn green, or they, they passed out on the couch, ate a bunch of cheesies and stuff, so who knows what really happens, right? Um, anyway, all joking aside. Uh, great night. I got to haunt the stage a little bit tonight, too, so that was always fun. Uh, I was a little more raunchier than everybody else, but I didn't know what else to do. It was like there was a Gretsch guitar on the uh, stage, so I kind of over-rocked it a bit, but I had fun with it. Uh, the crowd wasn't really ready to get that hyper, but uh, it was still fun. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, you know, I'm always I'm always the hyper one, right? So, uh, it's all done out of love. <laughs> it's all done out of love. So, uh, yeah, however you want to look at it, you know. Better stay on the road. So we're just waiting for my... Yeah, there we go. Everything kind of warming up. But uh, long story short, what a great night. So I got there. Ken's there, the 80-year-old man. And he's sitting there and he's talking to this uh, young lady. I've seen her in there a few times. Uh, named Julie. So her and I were talking for a bit. I showed, showed her the violin. She's like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Blah, blah, blah and stuff like that, and uh, she was there for a little bit, so her and I are shooting the breeze. And like, there's like maybe 10 people in the bar max. I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be one of those nights. So it's like, I had a whole thing planned out, but I'm like, it's gonna be such a mellow night, what do I play? You know what I mean? Like, it was, uh, but the guy that was playing, he was, uh, he, he kept it at a really nice pace. Uh, and then I was gonna let Greg go up before me, but he's like, no, no, I'll go ahead. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. He says, I'm just being a filler. You know what I mean? Like, um, so he was okay with uh, me going up. I kind of wanted him to go up first because he tends to live up the crowd a bit too. But again, there wasn't a big, big crowd. However, it was a good crowd, very good quality crowd. And a few, a few people that uh, I'm starting to get to know showed up. And then uh, the guy. We're going back a couple of weeks now, maybe a month or so more, that was on stage with the five-string fiddle. Well, he shows up, and guess what? He takes my Hornsteiner violin and really belted some sound out of that thing. Uh, it was really nice to hear somebody play that thing the way it's meant to be played, and i got to say, uh, that Hornsteiner violin is, and I, I will 
I don't think there's a louder violin on the planet. If I were to put off the goggle strings on that, it didn't need to be mic'd. <laughs> like, it just punches you in the face. It's the most awesome violin. I'm not saying it just became my, my favorite violin, but I could definitely have so much respect for it now. It's like, oh, well, that's what happens when you have a, a, a plugged-in guitar, two plugged-in guitars, and a uh, ukulele on stage, and this thing, unplugged, is still cutting through. Like, I mean, wow, what a machine, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so I'm like, I'm very, very pleased with uh, the performance. Uh, not my performance so much. I, I mean, yeah, I had fun with it. But, I mean, it was really nice to see a couple of tunes being belted out on that Hornsteiner violin. Um, I, I almost forced the guy to play it. Like, I'm like, uh, uh, I didn't recognize who he was because the last time I saw him, he didn't have his beard. And uh, the guy, I, I, how rude of me, I always forget people's names. He was like, uh, yeah, that guy over there, he plays he plays a wicked fiddle. And then I was like, when I, I said, well, maybe I'll, we'll, I'll invite him to the table. So I went and invited him to the table. And I was like, oh, I know you. Yeah, you heard him. I was like, yeah, you, you want to come and play my fiddle uh, on stage? And he's like, okay, well, whatever. So he went up and uh, somebody asked him to go up again. So I was like, by all means, go up, you know. Uh, so I go up and I do my parlor tricks and it's fun, you know, it's, it's whatever. But... Like, this is a guy who knows how to play. Like, there's melody, there's rhythm, there's uh, keys, there's whatever. Uh, it was slightly off-tuning from what they were in, but it doesn't matter, it's violent. He just had to kind of figure out, shift up a little bit. So I don't know if I was doing a little flat or a little bit, uh, a little sharp. But with those uh, harp tuners that you use, those $2 tuners, uh, you, you, you know, they're, they're kind of hit and miss. <laughs> and no two of them tune the same. So if the band tunes to that, everybody's got to tune to that. But so he just kind of worked it. And wow, that violin was really, really, really uh, singing tonight. It really, really put out a lot of power. Now he put out a lot more rosin on it than I normally do because I was worried about it really squeaking. And I didn't want to get a lot of squeaking out of it. But uh, so I was going more for... You know, the style that I was playing just kind of making up for my bad technique. But no, he, he rosin that bow up like it was no tomorrow. And I got to tell you, it really, 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 it cut through. The G was good. Uh, it, it, it was really powerful. And I asked him how he found it under the ear. And he said, yeah, I know it's, it's pretty good. But I said, the guys at the back of the room can hear probably better than you can up there. It's just it plays, it's so loud for produces so much sound, but it sounded so good, you know, for, I know the, the uh, GoPro won't capture how good it sounds, like, to, to us in the audience, but it was good, it was really good, it was a night, uh, some uh, British lady went up, and she sang a song, and it was just like, again, these are like, loose jabs, these people know each other's song, the songs better, right, see, I don't know the songs they know, so, um, but, uh, yeah, I got to belt out a few tunes. I did Mr. Roboto tonight. Something I always wanted to do, just to see how it goes. It didn't really take, but it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Again, uh, might not have been the crowd for it, but I could scratch those off the list. Uh, I did. Girl yelled Freebird, so I did it. Uh, well, the girl was nice enough to offer me a free piece of pizza. And, uh, I, I, you know, I was going to go up and sing again, so I declined. But it was very nice for me. And she was there with the, uh, she was engaged to the other guy that went up and told the jokes, so I didn't hit on her like that. But she was a very pretty girl, to say that. Um, but uh, lucky guy, so congratulations to them. But uh, yeah, I just fortunately out she yelled free bird. I said, ah, why the hell not? You know what I mean? Uh, just so uh, it was a little bit too quiet of a crowd for free bird, but uh, it was fun. Um, did uh, who do you love? Well, I mean, there was a Gretsch guitar on there, so I could. Yeah, you know, I couldn't really pass down the opportunity to play a nice scratch. I love those guitars. They're pretty fun to play. And they're uh, definitely guitars that, uh, you know, they, they got a nice crunch to them. You know what I mean? Uh, so I did uh, Dark Side uh, from uh, uh, Eddie and the Cruisers movie. Uh, I think it went over okay. okay. And I wasn't going to do any ballads because I was like, I was trying to stay with the theme. I was a little more hyper, but I was like, okay, well, I don't have anything to gear it down a little bit more um, that, I, that I could do well enough that I remember. But like, tonight would have been a great night to do uh, Coldplay. In fact, uh, Greg did a Coldplay song. Uh, what song was it? But uh, eventually I want to do The Scientist. Uh, I used to do clocks all the time on the mandolin. That used to come out pretty cool. And... Um, I guess 
at the end of the night, or the end of the day, end of the night, whatever, uh, it's just a fantastic night, you know, and uh, I pulled out a Bon Jovi song, uh, it, it, it didn't take as well as I thought, Sylvia's mother, uh, Dr. Hook's song, it didn't take quite as well as I thought, but uh, that song it usually does good, I think it just wasn't enough people in the crowd to get the sing-along, right? But it was definitely a joy. What else did I do? I did, uh, yeah, the Bruce Springsteen song, Going Down. Got a trucker on the road. Again, yeah, thanks to all the truckers. Uh, as long as it doesn't roll me over, I'm uh, okay. Uh, all you guys out there working hard, make sure everything runs on time. Oh, he's coming, he's coming fast and let him go by. Brought a double lead, so. <laughs> this guy's probably either heading home or heading down, so. But uh, I gotta say, yeah. So I did that song. I did it well. No single one on it. Uh, just throw a bottle. Got a little bit of audience participation from the uh, the host tonight. Uh, that was fun. Oh. Sorry, my CRV's really pulling to the pulling to the right. Blimey, is a perfect in this thing. Anyway, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's that, and uh, what else did I do tonight? Uh, I kind of forget what else I did. But anyway, oh, uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Time, or a half-assed version of it. And then uh, he, uh, Jill came up and uh, he sang along with it, and we kind of threw some harmonica on there. I was throwing him off, it wasn't him, it was me. Uh, I was playing uh, Who Do You Love with George Thorogood, and uh, I was a little bit sloppy on that, Gretch, I'll be honest with you. I've been playing the acoustic so much lately that uh, uh, I kind of, yeah, like I, I've kind of, not lost on the electric, but the strings are lighter, so I'm a little bit sloppy pulling things out of tune and whatever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was, trying to, I was trying to keep a good rhythm going for him so he could really let loose on the harmonica, but I was kind of throwing him off. Uh, but he, he, was, he was up there, and that was cool. I was, uh, that's my first technical jam uh, of somebody else coming up and, and, and jamming along with me. But it was really cool. It was really cool. I really enjoyed doing that song. Uh, my Hornsteiner, I went up and I did uh, improv, improv too, that I normally do. Uh, or improv like I normally do. And it, it came out pretty fine. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I was... It, it came out the way I practiced it, so that was that was pretty good. That, that, that was okay. Uh, the only thing I would say tonight was uh, I wish there were just a little bit more people in the audience. Uh, but a good night. Uh, it was a cozy night. Cozy night. Now, I don't know what kept everybody home is that everybody's partying because of the marijuana thing. Hopefully it's not that. Uh, Greg did Up and Smoke. I was going to go up and do that song. It's like, uh, maybe I should do the Up and Smoke song. Again, I'm not a marijuana fan, but, you know, whatever. It would have been funny. And, uh, what have you. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a really good night tonight. A lot of people, you know, I went up there, I think, two or three times. I don't know how many times I went up there. I think I went up twice. Got to play four or five songs each time. So it's like, okay, well... You know, it was just, there was nobody else. It was just basically three guys that went up and then a lady went up and then another guy went up for a bit. Uh, showed up a little bit later and then uh, there was a bit of a, a four-piece up there tonight. So very, very, very cool. No matter how you look at it, it was a very, very good night. Uh, now it's just a matter of getting home before it snows. Whatever. It is a cool night, a very cold night. Stars are out, so that's good. Long short beer on the road, I'm okay. But uh, that Nordsteiner violin, uh, I mean, that was really, uh, that really, really impressed me tonight to hear somebody else play it. Uh, I'd like to hear all my violins played by something who's an actual violin player, you know, like, I, I mean, I would really like to, uh, you know, hear the tonal qualities of that violin in the hands of somebody who's a much better player, right? And uh, that's kind of what happened tonight. He went up a couple of times with that thing, and uh, I gotta say, it didn't disappoint. 
it was really nice to hear, you know, and uh, I could, uh, like I said to him, I said, can you imagine this thing with a pickup in it? And, yeah, I know, it was, uh, it was, you know, it produces a lot of volume for, uh, you know, like, I mean, he was there shredding away while everybody else is plugged in, uh, except for the ukulele, the ukulele wasn't plugged in. Uh, the mics did obviously their job picking up the horn cider violin sound, but the, the real thing about it is that that thing didn't need to be mic'd. <laughs> That's the point I'm making with it, is, is that this thing projects, it is a really, and it has the cheapest, crappiest strings on it, and yet it produces that. So with a set of obligados on there or something, uh, this thing will be brilliant, completely brilliant. But people seem to like uh, my little stories and my little uh, you know, violin tantrums, if you want to call them, call them that. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I know, I know I'm not, I'm a guitar player that pretends he knows what he's doing. Whatever, and next week I'm going to bring out the electric violin. But I got a whole thing planned out for that, and that should go off really well because one thing about uh, tonight is, just give me an idea, like, I mean, it's a little bit of an anything goes kind of place. Uh, I did I did the interpreta interpretive dance again tonight. Uh, it sucked like the last time people got to laugh at it, and that's, that's, that's the goal is get everybody laughing, right? Uh, so, but then the we had a comedian tonight. That's cool. He was pretty good. I mean, I thought he was going to sing a song, but he wasn't. He was just telling stories. And I was like, oh, okay. That's all I wanted to do is go up and do a couple of stories. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was good. Ken went up, uh, the eight-year-old man, he went up there and, uh, you know, belted out some stories, too, uh, in his poetry. We had another guy went up. Uh, this guy was pretty brave. Uh, he was talking about Paul. Now, I understand what the guy was trying to do. Uh, it's just problem with time and place. Like one thing you guys know, if you follow my other channel, uh, that I, I'm, you know, on the geo I do geopolitics, and yeah, there's a lot of things people disagree with me on. I leave that at home. Uh, this guy, um, I can appreciate what he did uh, or what he was trying to do. It's just uh, the Irish have a saying: you never talk politics or religion in a bar. You know what I mean? Uh, or in a pub, or whatever. And I think that holds truth because it's just, you, you got people that are at different levels. The guy that just walked in can sit down, relax, and just take it in, agree with you, disagree with you. The person that's had about four, five, ten drinks, whatever, they might fly off the handle on you. Uh, there wasn't that, it didn't get to extremes or whatever, but uh, he definitely touched a few nerves on some people and he wasn't able to make his point. So I get what he was trying to do. Um, and stuff like that. And I, I see this in people's faces all the time where it's like they really truly want to talk about world politics and what's going on in the world. They want to be able to let it out, and I appreciate that. What I do when I go on stage is I try to make them forget that for a little bit. So that they, they can breathe a little, you know. And I think that's what this guy was trying to do was just get people to look into the gray area. The thing I talk about on the other channel all the time, I won't get too political, but it's just the idea that somebody went up there and they didn't really talk politics, but just kind of, you know, look, this is going on in the world and we need to kind of, you know, hit the middle ground a bit. You know, be more open-minded and more patient and stuff like that. And I understand there's a lot of people out there walking around broken. There's a lot of people walking around just wanting to fix everything. And uh, sometimes you can't. You know, like sometimes you can't. Uh, I made peace with that beast a long time ago. That you know, you, you can't fix the world no matter how good your intentions are. Uh, it's just not something that you can. You're, it's never going to be accomplished. You know what I mean? And that it's just you have to make peace with that. Just do the best you can. Just be a better version of yourself. Present that to the world. And I think that's what he was trying to get at. Uh, and he was talking politics with a few people and whatever. And uh, I don't think he upset anybody too harshly. But you always get that one guy that wants. I mean, he needs the outlet. He needs to talk to people. He needs to. Uh, talk about what's going on in the world and stuff like that, and I, and I appreciate that. Uh, was that the venue to do it when it was sitting quietly? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, did he get some good accomplishment? Uh, did he accomplish what he wanted to do? No, not really. Um, and that's the thing, it goes awry on you very quickly. 
uh, when you when you try to get political. Uh, musicians do this all the time, and, and they kill their careers doing it. Sometimes, you know, it's just like. Uh, and I'm not going to even use any examples. You probably would have examples popping up in your head. Uh, but the thing is, is that it's interesting to go to a place that does have that kind of uh, versatility. But had the bar been more packed, it probably would have been a little bit more raunchy for this guy and uh, whatever, you know. But, you know, people appreciated it. Um, in the sense of, okay, we'll respect it, but, you know, we, we disagree, but we'll respect it. And people want to get back to the music, you know what I mean? Uh, that type of thing. So, uh, I try to make it fun tonight. Uh, for me, it, it, I, I don't take offense because that's what I do for a living. So, it's like, okay, well, uh, for me, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be on my other channel doing all the geopolitics. And I'm on the right side of the aisle, so I know a lot of people get very upset about that. Uh, I'm not a hardcore right, uh, right but... Uh, Maybe on some things I am, maybe on some things I'm not. Uh, some windy roads here. The roads are a little bit greasy too, so we gotta, we gotta watch the speed when the roads are greasy like that. But at the end of the night, uh, it's just it's interesting that like that was a bit of a first to have somebody go up and uh, talk about stuff like that, right? So Right after that, uh, I think he went up after me. After that, I forget who went up. I think I went up again. And um, knocked a few out of the park. Yeah, I was having fun with it. I'm just having so much fun today. Like, it was just so good. It was almost... Oh, okay, how was the horses? The horses are standing there about a, about a tractor trailer up again. Uh, but at the end of the night, uh, great night, uh, really happy that uh, I, I'm so bad with names, but the gentleman that uh, played the, my uh, Hornsteiner violin, I think that guy, uh, holy jeez, buddy, <laughs> you know, he, 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 when you hear truckers, I respect truckers and all that, but when they say, you know what, why are these people pulling out in front of us, don't they know we can't stop on a dime? Well, dude, if I have to stop, you're right 30 feet behind me. That's on you. You're going to kill me. Back off. <laughs> I know you're in a rush, but back off. You're <laughs> going through a small town. you got to back it off. Uh, but anyway, that's my rant for today. Uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, the thing is, is that uh, you've got a situation tonight where an opportunity just kind of falls into your lap. Here's a guy who can play fiddle really, really, really well. Uh, the first time I saw him play, he was playing in a, a five-string electric fiddle uh, with uh, one of the hosts for the night who was playing that beautiful uh, Gibson Hummingbird. And uh, long story short, like I thought, I, I thought he rocked it pretty good. Uh, I was really happy. I was honored that he played it. And I know this violin, my bow, is not the best in the world, but it was what it did for me was it was just as enjoyable for me to go up and play as it was to hear my instrument in the hands of somebody else. It's just, wow, that's so different. It's not even the same instrument. <laughs> Number one, he turned it into an instrument. I just make noise on it. Um, but it's always enjoyable, you know? And people enjoy both of them. They enjoy what I did with it, because, uh, you know, I do a unique thing, and they enjoy what he did with it, because, wow, but the skill, the, the, you know, the professional. Again, some of the best musicians you've never heard of in your life uh, play at this place. It's just so enjoyable. the floor of my pop can just pop so um, but anyway yeah so yeah hearing that Hornsteiner I got to tell the story of the Hornsteiner and its history and something I really enjoy doing that too you know like uh, just letting people know what it is where it comes from and a lot of people enjoy that part of my performance too the like you know like the way you entertain people because it's like like I say when you're on stage you are an entertainer first uh, you go up there and your job is to make sure people enjoy the night. You know what I mean? That's what your job is really to do, is give them an experience. 
And telling the story is just as much a part of playing as it is, uh, it personalizes it. it uh, people will, might, might not remember how the tune went, but they'll say, oh yeah, this guy had this really old violin, it was 200 years old, uh, he had this other one, it was uh, haunted, it was a 17th, 13th Stradivari, he had this other one, it was the world's most loudest violin, and the world's most dangerous violin, because it was so loud, and a couple of guys played it, and it was really cool, and he told the story uh, about how a family from the 1700s, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, kept it going for a couple hundred years uh, in the family. And then the, you know, these things came out of a fiddle factory in the 1940s and 1930s, whatever it was. So that was really cool. Now I wish I could play my prog up violin live, and I would love to hear this man play that one. That one, hands down. Although it's sitting in two pieces right now, and I got to glue the neck back on it. That one would be brilliant uh, on stage. Uh, and I asked him how he liked this one. He says it played. He said it played good. And some violinists or, or fiddle players are kind of finicky about stuff like that. Well, I can't play this violin. It's, it's this. It's that. But he liked it. He liked it. So, so, so that tells me a lot. If, if a, a more professional player, I'm sure the violin, he, the violins he has at home are much better than what I have. But if he likes it, then it tells you that it's you know fairly well set up. Um, Whatever he said, the action on mine was really low. But I said it's the way I had to do the bridge because uh, otherwise the action was too high and stuff like that. And he was wondering about the piece of paper on the bridge. I said, "Well, the uh, tuners uh, they touch, and you get a buzzing sound off it." So I had to put it there to dampen it. Right? It's just the way the, the violin. I mean, it's an old violin, so you know it's not that it's going to fold on me or like that. Hopefully not. But you know, it's just it's just the way it's sat. You know, it's just, it has a low. Uh, it, has a high fingerboard or a low fingerboard, uh, fingerboard uh, which means you have to have a low bridge. Low bridge means the tailpiece sits low, which means if you have tuners on there, the, the tuners might buzz out on you. So there's that. There's that old can at work. You know what I mean? uh, so that's why I had to do it the way I did. But that said, it did not dampen the sound of that sound beast, as I call it. Uh, it was just really nice to hear that. I would love to hear it with my lion head violin. That would be really cool too. Um, the girl she, that plays violin, she wasn't there. Uh, she's quite the busy person, so she doesn't get out all the time. But I would like to hear her play, like, uh, uh, I don't know if she would or not, but I would like to hear her play that too. Like, uh, uh, whenever, well, I was talking to this other girl, Julie, tonight, uh, who was telling me, like, because she knows her well, she says, yeah, she has a couple of kids, uh, she's married. Uh, she has a business, all that stuff, so she doesn't really have time to learn new stuff. So it's like uh, you know, you only get you only get the privilege of uh, listening to her once in a while. I was like, and, and when she gets here, people pull her up on stage. You know, like she's kind of like a go-to person, right? Um, I want to do more open stage stuff where okay, I'm gonna do two songs that I practice, then someone's coming up and jamming. But I also I gotta step up my game before I do that because. Uh, uh, like on, it was on me. I was the sloppy guy tonight, not the other guy. It was, it was. Uh, but that, you know, that happens sometimes too. You know, but it, it went well. Like I mean, for two guys who never jammed before, and sometimes you get that where uh, it's a hit and a miss, where the guy you never jammed with before gets on stage, and it sounds like you've been playing together for like 20 years. But I'm a rock and roll guy. These guys are uh, a, a total different style than me. So. Those little idiosyncrasies of how you play, uh, in timing and in rhythm and stuff like that, throw people off when they're not used to your style. And I think that's why he was having a harder time with the harmonica. He knew the song, but not the way I play it. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's not on him, that was on me. But it still came out, I think, pretty well. Um, you know, like, that was cool to jam with a harmonica player. I think that's the first time I ever had a harmonica player jump up on stage while I was on stage. Uh, that's really cool. Twice. You know, it's like, all right, uh, thanks a lot, man. You know? and, and that's what it's about, you know. It's about that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, Greg, I want to I, I want to uh, jam with Greg on a blues tune of some sort. Um, I would like to bring my SG out and get him to bring out his Telecaster and just rip it to some open E blues. Uh, I think that would just be powerful, awesome, rock your face off. 
you know, I'll hit him with the Gibson growl, and he, he can uh, he can uh, razzle us with the bubble tones of the, of the Telecaster. I think an SG and a Telecaster on the same stage would be so much awesome. It might actually hit Mr. T levels of awesome and blow the roof off the place. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, that would be very very cool. But um, I'd like to uh, kind of put something together that I know. Uh, won't be, it'll be improvised. The progression uh, won't be improvised, but the, the, the solo will be improvised. It's something that he can really wail on. Uh, you know, again, the three chord, uh, twelve bar blues, that type of thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll belt that out someday. And uh, yeah, that said, there was a mishap on the, on the stage tonight. Uh, Greg dropped, uh, knocked my Coca Cola over, and uh, <laughs> he bought me a new one. So that was very nice of him. He didn't have to. Uh, I mean, it was almost done to drink anyway. But I was like, oh, you don't have to. Don't worry about it. He did it anyway. So I don't feel bad about the guy a few uh, about a month ago that I spilled his beer. But it happens, right? I was just worried that we'd short something out on the darn stage. And oh no, liquid, liquid electronics don't work. You know? But I get there, and Riley, the bar uh, barmaid, she's there. I say hello to her, I go to the bathroom, I come back out, and there, there's my Coca-Cola sitting there for me. I said, oh, I am a woman after my own heart, you know what I mean? She goes, yeah, you're one of the locals, you know, it's like, or whatever, so they get to know you, but it, I thought it was very sweet that uh, it was ready to go, I didn't even have to ask. So, yeah, thank you, Riley, for uh, making sure I had my drink before I even had to ask. But little things like that, I, I, you know, it gets cozy. Yes, at some point I'm going to have to move on to uh, other places to play. Um, uh, Mr. Giuseppe or Jill Giuseppe, however you say his last name, I, I hope I'm not insulting you. Um, I was talking about it, so I said, are you a working musician? He goes, I'm trying. He says, uh, I'm getting back into it. Well, whatever. But they came all the way from Hamilton to play. Hamilton. We're talking a, a six to nine hour drive from Hamilton. Uh, depends how you break it up, right? Uh, Hamilton is pretty damn far. But they heard about the legendary Cafe 1870 and they wanted to come out. And they were playing in Ottawa last night, so... But he's kind of like in the boat that I'm in, and he played all originals tonight pretty much, which uh, was awesome. But he was telling me about this place in Hamilton uh, that uh, it's kind of like if you're in Hamilton, you're going to play a place, and that's the place to play. He was telling me that... Um, that uh, they uh, they do four hours a night there. That's a long gig. Four hours? So what he did is he was able to, like he played about an hour worth of originals uh, all in. I mean, usually the hosting band there goes up for, oh, half an hour, we'll say. But he was up there for an hour off and on, a half an hour, then he went up a couple times. And I think every song was his. So, I mean, that's impressive to have an hour's worth of original music. Uh, and you know, be able to get away with it. So good, good on him. You know what I mean. But like you said, you know, it's hard to uh, make ends meet as a, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, in a band anymore. So we're taught to tell some places to check out, like the Heart and Crown and stuff like that in Ottawa. I said, if you can get a gig there, I mean, there, there, there's your payment for the month. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a, if you can get in, it's a very tough place to get in. But if you can get in there. Uh, it's a place that you're going to make good money. You know, I mean, some guys were playing the the B bands, so to speak. Some of them were getting 1,800 a night. I don't know if it's still like that, but the back in the back, they would fly people in from Halifax, pay them 3,500 to 5,000 a night. Mind you, you play there twice a year if you're lucky. But if you could set up one gig a month for five grand, uh, yeah, it'd be tough to get get in there. I mean. The, I mean, people were elbowing each other to get booked there, but, uh, you know, to get through the door, but nonetheless, um, no matter how you look at it, if you can do it, and that's what I'm trying to do, is set myself up a circuit, so play one gig a month, and it pays my whole month's expenses, and I get a whole month to work on a new show, or maybe twice a month, but I think what, realistically, you know, if I make 100, 125 a night, that would be, um, probably more realistic in this day and age. Uh, places don't play, pay like they used to. I don't know why that is. Maybe not as, you know, a lot of people nowadays, they go out, like for example, I'm sitting at a table and the guy who played the fiddle, he's drinking orange juices all night. Orange juice aren't the same as a double vodka, you know what I mean? Uh, 
but I was drinking, uh, I had three Pepsis. Now, I still tip a dollar per drink, um, whatever, but three Pepsis are only two fifty a night. You know what I mean? you got to sell a lot of Pepsis, uh, where a beer's like maybe three fifty to five bucks, you know what I mean? Five fifty, six bucks. Uh, the on tap stuff, uh, like your Guinness, those things are like six, seven bucks a piece. Uh, but those things, you, you, you spend an hour drinking a Guinness, and it tastes the same after an hour as it did on the first sip. So that's why I like Guinness. And you just you can drink three of them in the night and still get the same buzz as if you drank ten of them. Uh, only uh, a hangover on Guinness is a freaking bloody hangover. Um, it's a sipping beer, you know, or uh, not a beer, but an ale or whatever. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's 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 so bars have to make money, so they now make people they play for the door. But I think in that place, even tonight, as quiet as it was, there was probably over 30 people in the bar, maybe 25 at the height of it, 25 30 people, well, maybe not that much. But if you're getting two dollars a person, you would have made your gas money anyway. Uh, not this guy because I mean, he came all the way from Hamilton. But I'm pretty sure if he came all the way from Hamilton, they, they probably spotted him a couple of bucks. You know what I mean? But he was in the area anyway playing in Ottawa. So good for him. Uh, but that, that one little tip I'll give. When I used to play four nights a week in the old man, we would try to set it up. Because we learned the hard way that if you played on one end of the city one night, and then on the other end of the city the other night, it was a real pain in the ass to move things back and forth. So what we would try to do is set it up so that we would follow suit. Okay, we're going to play here, you know, at one end of the city and work our way to the other end. And we started doing stuff like that. And sometimes it allowed us uh, easier to drop off the equipment the night before, just before we get there. Uh, and it did help out. So we weren't always, like, heading at different ends of the globe, so to speak. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we played in Castleman one night then uh, down Bank Street the next night, you know what I mean? Uh, it was like, okay, we'll play Castleman, then we'll play Carlsbad Springs, then we'll play Borchette or whatever. Do them, in, do them in a row, and sometimes they'll put you up for the night and you just work your way back. Uh, that works well. Uh, like this guy, he probably could have gigged his way back to, uh, uh, gigged his way back to uh, Hamilton. But I think they were visiting family up here anyway, so I was like, well, you know, do a double whammy, right? But if you worked your way from Ottawa back to Hamilton, doing gigs the way back, mind you, it'd probably take you, there's a lot of places in between here and there, you know what I mean? Uh, so for me, I would like to play all the local places, but most of them don't have their own PA. Uh, but if I could set it up like one gig a week uh, that paid okay, no problem. Uh, you know, like again, these jam nights are great for honing my skills. Tonight was a real fun night for me. It was a little bit more raunchy than I probably should have been, but people enjoy it. They, they just, you know, they just they're not going to headbang along with it. You know what I mean? Um, I like how I did the Dark Side song. I can't wait to see how that one comes out. I was a little bit sloppy with it again. Playing a guitar you don't normally play all the time, uh, you can tend to be a bit sloppy. But sometimes you, th because you know when you're sloppy a bit. But sometimes it doesn't come out. And sometimes it comes out in the recording. Sometimes it doesn't. It's like, oh, I thought it was way more sloppier than that. But then it's like, no, oh, you weren't that sloppy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I know, I know, um, I was sloppy on on uh, Who Do You Love for sure. Or, uh, yeah, Who Do You Love? There, the uh, George Thorogood song. But um, I haven't played it in a while. You know, it was just I, I threw it out there. You know, I wasn't, I was not even anticipating playing more than two songs tonight. And when I got there, it's like, oh, okay, well, if it's going to be a really quiet night, the songs I had were going to be way. Even my ballads were going to be way too uh, too heavy. Uh, I did them anyway. Um, always wanted to do the the Always song from Bon Jovi live. Uh, I, I I liked it. I think it went well. But the problem is, is I need to find another gearing of tuning. So I got hyper. I've got slow. But I, I need something in between a little bit there to uh, kind of capture uh, you know a, a night that uh, might be a little bit slower. You know. Uh, but it was a good night. It was a really good night. It was. It wasn't a good night, it was a great night, it was an awesome night. Again, sometimes it's uh, about the quality, not the quality. Oh my god, there's a lot of snow on that vehicle. There's snow, there, there's snow up here. No. Guys, I'm only 45 minutes north here. What are you doing to me? There's snow on the freaking ground. There's snow. J 
just say no to snow. You know, like, okay, today they legalize marijuana, it snows. We've been cur marijuana cursed her, made it snow. Legalizing marijuana made it snow. I blame marijuana, the marijuana's for this. It was those damn marijuana's that did it. Here's just freaking snow on the ground. It's not a lot of snow, but it's enough to say snow. Uh, but as long as I'm not driving back in a blizzard, I'm okay. <laughs> but, man, there are going to be a lot of upset people tomorrow when they uh, wake up and see all this white stuff on the ground, just a little skiff of white stuff there. Uh, and you heard it here first. Mind you, by the time you see this video, there's going to be like four feet of snow on the ground. But you heard it here first, technically, tonight. Uh, it was recorded here first, but you're not going to hear this video for probably about a month <laughs> from when I made it. So, by that time, I was like, what do you mean it's the first snowfall? It's not the first snowfall. It's like, man, uh, we're deep in the winter. We're almost in the freaking December by the time you hear this thing. Uh, that's a good crust of snow there. Uh, not liking that. Not liking that. Now, I, I, if it gets really bad, guys, like, I'm going to... If it's a really bad blizzard, blizzardy night, uh, I mean, I do have to test my winter tires on this thing to see how good or bad they may be. Um, but, you know, there's going to be within reason. There might be some, you know, I may have to, for like a, a little bit, not go out if, if it's really bad. But if I can make it out, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, this is what I live for each week. Uh, so I got all my violins with the exception of uh, three left to do. Uh, I can't do the Hornsteiner. I'm not going to bother, or I can't do the proc up violin. Well, not until I fix it. That could be whatever that is. Uh, I don't have the money to buy the, wood, the, uh, the proper uh, high glue to glue the neck back on. Maybe I'll try the, the glue gun again. We'll see. But it, that glue just doesn't hold. So it held for like a half an hour or something like that. And then the neck folded on me again. Uh, so I need the proper, proper glue and get it fixed. And I got to do it myself. I can't afford anybody else to do it. Uh, the other one is the uh, three-quarter scale violin. I could bring that one out at a later date just to show it off. But I don't know. I, I probably will just so it doesn't feel left out. You know what I mean? Uh, all these little violins have characters. But uh, next week will be the electric violin. I'm already working on a couple of songs that I can play and sing with it. Just to see what happens. Uh, you know, because again, it's fun to experiment at these... Uh, these uh, you know, the, these uh, jam nights because you just don't know what their audience response is going to be or whatever. Uh, and it's, it's always fun, you know? It's always fun. Uh, I am pretty heavy for that place, though. So one thing I would say is that, uh, you know, like, I, I for me to keep the vibe going there, number one, the place has to be full to get the people around you. Uh, when there's not too many people, uh, it's hard to get. It's hard to get a few people rowdy. No, well, it isn't. It isn't. It's uh, a few people it quiets the place down. Uh, sometimes you need that ambient noise of extra people in there to kind of just get everybody hyper and talking loud. And then when they're talking loud, the juices get flowing. And uh, next thing you know, they're singing and dancing, right? Uh, but. It was fun no matter how you did it tonight. It was just a great night. And again, I, I just you take away so much from it. Uh, but if I have the whole night to myself, uh, like tonight, if I had, if I was playing the whole night to myself tonight, yeah, I probably could have got people going pretty good. But uh, yeah, again, it really does, like I, it always comes back to who goes up before you. Intergalactic Space Hippie was not there tonight, so didn't have to worry about him at all. Uh, he wasn't there. But, uh, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, Jill was a tough act to follow, but he was a different act to follow. He's up in the center of the room. Uh, but uh, that's the whole thing. Like, it, it, it's it's a different act to follow. That figure picking style uh, was really good. Like, uh, he said some really cool things tonight, and I complimented it on his finger style. I said, man, he's a brilliant player. Uh, I asked him who some of his influences were. So he's a bit of a Chad Atkins guy, Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan Steyer, you know, Stray Cats guy. I mean, it was a Stray Cats model, uh, Gretsch on stage, too. Uh, kind of picked that out right away. Uh, the Gretsch stayed in tune really well to say that uh, he used the uh, vibrato on it. But he said so with the... Uh, the uh, flamenco guitar he had, he 
late. He said, I asked him about his tie. I said, I like how you have like no holes in it. I said, you got the rhythm and the leads all going at the same time. He goes, yeah. He says, uh, one of his, uh, wasn't Chet Atkins, but it was uh, whoever he was inspired by. He said, your whole band is on your hand. The thumb is your bass line. Your index finger and your middle finger are your rhythm. And the other two are your uh, soloing fingers. You know, so you can do a bass line, a guitar rhythm, and in a solo all at the same time. So it's like it's kind of like uh, a real technical version of the Jimi Hendrix theory that I talk about, where you, you turn the um, the uh, lead into the rhythm. But only on this, you have a bass line going on it. So uh, you got to really admire that kind of tightness. And mind you, the guy knows his, his stuff well, so the tightness is just going to be there. Um, and that's what I mean why I got to step up my game a little bit. Like, uh, But tonight was just kind of a, okay, the songs that I kind of practiced. Again, when you're playing your own equipment, that makes a big difference. I'm not making excuses or like that. But it does make a difference when you're really familiar and comfortable with what you're playing. And sometimes for jam nights, what throws people off is a different instrument. Uh, the second, I played Greg's guitar for, uh, for the second, that Taylor for the second time. Um, it plays so nice. It is a very nice guitar. But I still am getting used to it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, um, I didn't miss any chords or anything like that. Uh, and I, I got to be careful with it because, again, the way I thrash on things. Um, like one guy was saying, to me, the harmonica guy was saying to me, and I goes, wow, he says, you play fast. He says, like, that, that's, he says, you got some pretty speedy chops there. You know, like, that, that's pretty impressive. So, you know, I, I enjoy that too. But it's, to me, that speedy stuff, those little licks that I do, is, is to get people hyper, you know. It's to build it into something. It's the train wreck, right? Uh, build it up and, and then uh, drive it home, you know what I mean? It doesn't work all the time. You can't do it on every song. Uh, I do it on the jam night songs because you're only usually doing three in a row or four in a row. Uh, but it was quite enough night that I really got to steal the stage for a little bit. I really appreciate that. Appreciated that. Uh, but it was just you know you get a you just don't know what you're going to get. And uh, one thing I was t telling that Julie girl tonight, I said one thing I love about the jam nights is with live music, it's never done the same way twice, and it's always new. And she's like, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, so yeah, like so, she was fascinated by the violin. She was a little on the tipsy side, so I was worried about her, you know, handling the violin, knocking it out of tune, not dropping it or anything like that. But it's like people tend to be a little bit rougher when they're uh, not that she plays or anything. So, oh, can I see it? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. But that's what jam night instruments are for me. You know what I mean? Uh, jam night instruments are like, uh, you know, if something bad happens to it, I'll, you know, I won't be happy about it. But I, you know, it's the risk I'm willing to take bringing out my instrument. So, like for example, my hundred dollar horn cider with all the other stuff on it, I don't even think I got two hundred dollars into it. Um, if something bad happened to it, it's not irreplaceable in, in the sense of cost-wise. It's just it's irreplaceable in the sense of you're probably not going to find another one like it of the same year. You know, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But, uh, but it was interesting. You know, like it, it's always interesting. So, yeah, like when I go on stage and I'm playing. You know, uh, I don't know what the price range would be on the uh, Steyr, uh, Ryan Steyr guitar, uh, Gretsch, but it's probably going to be anywhere from 1500 to 2800 bucks. It's a privilege to be allowed to play that guitar. Uh, you can go price one out and you'll see what I mean. Um, the guaranteed that Taylor's going to be probably anywhere from 1500 to 3500 bucks. So again, you really want to respect these instruments when you're playing them. Uh, like for me, I asked Greg, I'm like, I can't believe you bring that thing out as a jam like guitar, as the meter guitar. Like I bring out a $400 guitar myself, and I think that's a little bit of overkill. You know, I'm like, wow, if something bad happens to it's 400, you're out 400 bucks, you know what I mean? But no, it's not the way he looks at it. Like he'd rather have the better playing guitar on there. And I'm glad he does because the thing plays wonderfully and sounds amazing, right? I gotta watch out because last time he was a little raccoon. I swear to God, I nipped his tail. I didn't hit him, but I was like, I was so close. And he was right around here, so. Surprise, uh, for those little buggers out there. And there's a rabbit. There's, that's a big, freaking fat rabbit. It's like the, uh, that's the first rabbit I've seen in 
years. There was a big fat rabbit sitting at the end of a driveway there, right where the raccoon was. What is it with you friggin' rodents? Trying to get yourself killed all the time? Yeah, there was a friggin' rabbit there. Yeah, it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm almost home. Great night, a lot of fun. Uh, got pretty good footage today. That GoPro, I don't know how full it is, but boy, I'm gonna have to start cracking on the uh, the uploads because I tell you, uh, man, that, that camera fills up and that fills up my laptop. My laptop's always on the edge of full, you know what I mean? Like it's, a, I, I keep it well topped up, almost as fast as I'm putting the, song, the uh, tunes up. <laughs> I pretty much uh, fill up, uh, you know, the, the, the memory. And I love to keep every performance that I, that's up there, but I just don't have the memory on to do it. So, you know, I'll have to uh, resort to uh, YouTube to, uh, you know, uh, keep the public record of it or whatever. Um, but what a great night. Really, really happy with, uh, you know, how that turned out, you know, again, meeting other musicians and even non-musicians. And it's just nice to see people enjoy themselves. Uh, even people that are still a little bit wound up tight, you know, with what goes on in the world and stuff like that. Like I say, this is not my political channel. My other channel is my political channel. I really, one of the reasons why I do what I do uh, on this channel is because of people like that. That, you know, they need an outlet or whatever. And he was trying to hint at, you know, people, you know, just consuming all this. If you want to find bad stuff in the world, you, you can find it so easy. And we, we overlook the beauty. And I, I, I yell at a few, uh, you know, like even with misery in the world, there's still, uh, what do you call it, flowers still bloom, you know what I mean? And that's the way I look at the world. There's still lots of beauty left in the world. And if you could share some of it, we might, some of us might actually be able to experience a bit of a renaissance, even in dire times. Now, you know, here in the West, we don't really have the struggles like the third world has. We don't, we don't have the struggles uh, that uh, a lot of people, you know, we, we take for, we have first world problems so far. But that said, I also understand a first world country can turn into a third world country very quickly. And you need to appreciate what you have and not just dwell on what might happen. And that's why I do this channel. That's why I, I, I'm always harping on people to come and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, basically uh, subscribe to this channel is because of stuff like that where I want you to just kind of relax, enjoy that there is things out there that you can experience for not too much money and, you know, like go to a local place, take in some live music, take in a jam night, take in a, you know, a dance, a theater, whatever, and, but do something that you have to interact with other human beings and meet people. You know, meet people. I love talking to new people. I really do. Uh, yes, people like their alone time. People like their, uh, um, you know, their personal space. I get that. But sometimes you need to spring, spread your wings a bit and be a bit of a social butterfly and understand the butterfly effects of being a social butterfly rains a lot of positivity on a lot of people. And that's, that's what, if I take away anything from tonight, uh, there was a lot of positivity in that room. Um, even, you know, acknowledging that, yes, you got you got to be aware of what's going on in the world today and stuff like that. And, and I get that. And there's a lot of people, they're, they're trying, you know, they're, they're trying to reach out to people, you know, to kind of make the world a better place, even if we, they, not everybody sees eye to eye. And I, and I can appreciate that. But I'm also telling people, sometimes you got to let that stuff go. That Things you can't control in your life, you have to let go. Because... Uh, there's not much you can do it. You, you have to you have to base your life on mindset. And one of the mindsets that I really like is creativity. Creativity is a funny thing because creativity can come from many angles, different things. Uh, for example, this girl, Julie, I was talking to tonight. I've seen her in there before, and I'm sure I'll talk to her again the next time I see her. She's a, She does transcriptions, language. This girl was talking uh, to Ken, the 80-year-old man, about how she basically translates things. And she was right into it. Like, this wasn't a, oh, uh, this is my job and whatever, it sucks, no, no. No, she was telling me all kinds of, this is what language is, and, and you know, uh, you know, she was so passionate about it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, you know, like, could you be so lucky to be enjoying what you're doing? You know what I mean? 
uh, and that's what she does for a living. So that that's interesting to me. Like that that's like okay, wow, you know, it's not something I would ever be doing, <laughs> you know. Uh, but to learn the language and try to master it, and, and again hone the art of the craft rather than what is it? What am I going to get out of it? Uh, sometimes to get something out of something, you have to give something to it. And one thing you have to give is yourself to a craft. For me, it's musicianship. For other people, it could be writing poetry. For other people, it could be language, you know, teaching language or transcribing. It could be many things for everybody. But Renaissance is a state of mind. But you also have to go out and look for the beauty sometimes. And if you look for it, you're going to find that there's a lot more of it out there than you realize. Um, and if when you find it, try to share it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. So you guys have yourself a great night. I did. Rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourselves. Be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. Have yourselves a great night, eh?